Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. We welcome you to our Daily Fountain devotional. Today being Thursday, April 18th, 2024. We are glad to have you as we meditate in the Word of God. We want to look at our theme or topic that says, Test the Spirit. But before we go ahead, let us pray. Eternal God, we want to thank you this morning for the privilege to be alive in the land of the living. Thank you for your grace upon our lives to have an opportunity to meditate in your word. We pray that, Lord, you grant us grace that as we look into your word, it will grant us, Lord, an understanding that at the end, your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. For in Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. People of God, like I said, our topic today is test the spirit. Test the spirit. We want to look at 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. 
We'll read from verse 1 through 6. And I read in King James Version. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that he should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of of error. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Test the spirits. From the scripture we read this morning, you will get to understand that there is no one spirit only. There may be different spirits because the test says, test the spirits. That means there are other spirits. We have the spirit of God. We have the spirit of the devil. We also have the spirit of man that controls man, that leads man to do good or bad. And now the problem of the world today is not necessarily demonic agents outside but the ones that have infiltrated the church of God. That is the major concern. That is the problem we are facing today. Not just the spirits that are doing works outside, but the ones that are happening inside the church because it has brought confusion in the household of faith. People find it difficult to know the actual spirit, to know the real spirit. And that is why we want to look into this very vital topic, test the spirit, so that we'll be able to know the spirits that are of God and the ones that are not of God. Now, these people that enters the church of God, not with the spirit of God, they are dressed in suits. They are dressed like pastors. They also carry Bible. They carry the big Bible. They may also speak in tongues. They may also prophesy. Because that is what we see in the church today. Prophecies, speaking in tongues, doing miracles and all that. So they come into the church and they parade themselves with such titles that they have. Perhaps one may call himself a pastor. One may call himself a general overseer. One may call himself an apostle. Another may call himself as an evangelist. Others may call themselves prophets. All of them, they work even in the church, not outside the church. And thereby, there are confusions, even in the church today, to know the real spirit 
the rightful spirit. They proclaim sugar-coated messages. The way they speak, they want people to hear them speak. And what the people will hear them speak is sugar messages. Messages that will, you know, attract men to them. Messages that will make men to feel that they are real spirits speaking to men. That they come from God. Meanwhile, it may not be so. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 19, and I quote, Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. End of quote. Now when you look at this scripture, you will discover that the main reason, the main purpose why these people have entered the church is to deceive the believers, is to deceive those who don't know the right spirit, who don't understand when God is really speaking to them. The reason is that they want to benefit from their hearers. They want to get gain. They want to feed their stomach, maybe through the word of God. And they know that the only way they can achieve that is by proclaiming the message, by giving, a, a committing or making miracles for men to believe, by speaking in tongues, by prophesying, and doing so many things. So that men will come closer to them, and then they will now achieve their purpose from their hearers. In Jude 1, 19, the Bible says, and I quote, These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. End of quote. They don't have the Spirit of God, but they will speak as if they have the Spirit of God, so that men will believe. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 from 13 through 15 and I quote for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, if you look at this very scripture we read, you will now understand truly what these false prophets do. They appear as ministers of God. They appear as angels of light. They appear as people who are bringing the true word to men. Because he said that Satan has transformed himself like an angel of light. The purpose is to deceive men, for men to believe that that spirit is coming from God. Meanwhile, it is not a soul. In fact, they are antichrist in nature. That is what they are, antichrist in nature. They are engaged in unimaginable things, things that men cannot understand, things that they do. When you look at it, you will now discover that it does not match with what they say. They do unimaginable things. Just to feast on the vulnerable, those who don't understand, those who don't actually know when the Spirit of God is ministering, you know, they fall victim of these false uh, prophets. Hence, our test today is urging us to test all spirits. Now, you can discover, to test all spirits, it now means a challenge which every one of us must go through. Because for you to discover Something, if it is real, it's a challenge. 
You must test every spirit. You must know whether the spirit is coming from God or not. Test means to, to find out something, to know the true fullness of something, and to know how to go about it. Now, in this place we read, you will see that we need to be very, very careful as Christians to know when the right spirit is ministering to us. And what do I mean by that? When God himself is talking to us, not just anything we hear from anybody. To test the spirit, there are many things we must do in order to understand when the spirit of God is already in charge, speaking to us or ministering to us. People of God, do not believe every spirit. Do not also believe everything you hear. Just because someone may come to you and say that the message was inspired by God. It is not every message that is being inspired by God. There are many messages, messages from the beat of hell, messages from God, messages from men. People out of assumption at times, they give their own messages. So as Christians, as people of God, as children of God, we need to be wise. We need to really focus on the word of God to know when God is ministering to us, to know when false prophets are also ministering to us so that we will not fall victim to them. Now, like I said, there are many ways to test these uh, spirits. Number one, check if their words match what God says in the Bible. Check if what they speak is what the Bible says. Because today, so many false prophets have misinterpreted the word of God in order to suit their purpose, in order to feast from other people. And they turn the word of God upside down. So, but we must check very well and know if what they minister to us, if they are really what the word of God uh, says. Because the word of God is the only thing that has the life that we are talking about. The spirit of God is in the word of God. And without the word of God, one cannot understand the, the things that we are talking about. When you have the word of God in you, when you see how they minister and you know the word already, it will help you to know when this false prophet has come in. Number two, check their commitment to the body of believers. Check their commitment to the body of believers. If we read 1 John chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible says, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went off out, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. You can imagine. So you have to check their commitment to the body of Christ. Are they really part of the body of Christ? Are they really part of the, 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 the Christian dome? Or are they out of the Christian dome? It's not just by coming into the church and minister that makes one a prophet or makes one an apostle or makes one a general overseer or a pastor or an evangelist or whatever. No, it is not that. But we must check their commitment. Do they remain in the body of Christ? That is another thing you will do in order to find out the spirit. Number three, check their lifestyles. How is the lifestyles of the man, of the woman that ministers to you? You have to know his life. Know her life. What does he do? What does she do? 
not just by ministering the word of God. Does your lifestyle connote the word that you minister, that you preach? If you read 1 John chapter 3, 23 and 24, he says, And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he had given us. You see, now, do they remain in the commandment of God? The commandment of God is what gives us whatever we need to do. That should, should show us our lifestyle, how we live our lives as ministers. So how to know the right spirit? Those who minister the word is their lifestyle the same with the word of God. Do they obey the word of God? Or do they preach to people? Maybe you tell somebody, uh, don't steal, and you steal. You say, do not commit fornication. Why you do that? Do not commit adultery. Why you do that? Does your lifestyle, you know, match with the commandment of God? Does what you preach also match with your character? Number four, check the fruits of their ministries. Does their ministries last? In where we took our test in 1 John chapter 4, when you look at verse, it says, We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of uh, error. You can see. So does the fruit they bear, does it show the ministry? Does it show what they speak? These are the areas we will know about the spirits, different spirits. Number five, check if they believe and teach that Jesus is fully God and fully man. Because the scripture says that Jesus is fully God and fully man. Does these people believe? Does they preach that Jesus is fully God and fully man? Because we are we say anybody who do not confess that Jesus is truly God and flesh, that that person is not of God. Now, number six, for you to know the right spirit, you must be certain of who is in you and your salvation in Christ. Are you saved? Are you a child of God? If you are, then the Spirit of God in you will help you to know all spirits when they come. To know the right spirit. Number seven, you must feast and meditate on the word of God daily. Do you read your Bible? That is one thing that will help you and I to know when the Spirit of God is ministering. And when the spirit of devil is ministry, do you read your word, the word of God? Do you meditate on it on daily basis? Give yourself time to study the word of God and to meditate on the word of God. Number eight, you must practice godliness with contentment. This is one of the areas where these false prophets deceive so many people. Because they are not contented with what they have. There is no godliness in them. And any little message can carry them away. And before you know, they are falling victim to the enemy. So we must practice godliness with contentment. Number nine, you must be prayerful and ask God to give you his Holy Spirit to guide and to guard you from falsehood without the holy spirit of god we cannot understand or know the spirits that are not of god it's only the spirit of god that will help us that will guide us and say this particular message is not from god because we hear so many things today on the pulpit and it is inside the church it's not outside the church and those people that preach they are known as ministers of god from different backgrounds and different positions they occupy. So we must need to be very careful and always pray to God to grant us Holy Spirit to know when the rightful Spirit is ministering to us. And finally, 
Number 10, you must trust God in all circumstances and truly allow the Holy Spirit to be in charge of your life. We must trust God. We must depend on God. And we must allow the Holy Spirit to take charge of our life. When we yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will direct us. We can never fall victim to this false prophet. So that is why it is important for us as children of God to test the spirits. Don't just believe anything you hear. Don't just accept anything you see just because it, it is accompanied with in the name of Jesus. No, there are many prophets all around and the reason is for them to deceive you. So we need to ask God for mercy. We need to ask God for grace to help us so that we as Christians will not fall victim to these false prophets. May God bless his word as we hear this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. You can repeat this prayer with me. Say, my God and my Father, please give me the grace to identify and shun agents of darkness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for having granted us the grace to look into your word this morning. Help us to know the right spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we will not fall victim of falsehood. And that at the end, your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing us. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.